Ah, uh, so we're very excited that uh, Queen of Katwe has finally hit SA. Um, uh, it's coming out next week and I could not be more honored to be joined by uh, Mira Naya, who happens to have directed this wonderful body of work. Mira, thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you and it's a great pleasure to be here. Oh, Queen of Katwe, where do I start? I must tell you, um, when we went to watch the screening, all of us after the film, we went outside and all the ladies were kind of double checking if their makeup is still intact because it's such a powerful, powerful story and a very unlikely story to be told. You know, a girl loving chairs after following her brother to some dingy place and actually be going on to being the champion, the biggest thing to ever happen in Uganda. Um, how did you get acquainted with the story? Well, uh, my home is Kampala, Uganda, for the last 27 years since I made Mississippi Masala there. And uh, I'm surrounded by local stories, but you can imagine my surprise that the story of Fiona Mutesi actually came to me from Hollywood, uh, from Tendo Nagenda, the vice president of Disney, who's Ugandan, who uh, read about Fiona in a little journal in ESPN and came to my garden in Kampala and said, do you know about Fiona? And even though she was 15 minutes away from where we were standing, I had no idea who she was, because she did not at that time, about four years ago, get uh, the amount of play in the press that, she, of course, as she does now. Um, but it was a remarkable story immediately because of a girl who sort of dared to dream and who had the good fortune of finding a teacher in Robert Katende to harness that dream, which was her gift of chess. Yeah. Um, but it was a story of a whole community and how, you know, how we create a champion, not alone, but with everyone. Um, so I met Fiona, met Katende, met Harriet, met all the real people over months and developed the story as a screenplay with Bill Wheeler. And, um, and it was a chance for me to distill, you know, being from Uganda on the screen, you know, making something authentic and pulsating and full of the style and the vibrancy that we, I live around, the kind of joy and dignity of everyday life, which although is a struggle, there is there is a joy in it that uh, I had not yet seen on screen because the images of Africa, if you see them at all, are barely positive or barely about the real real life we live. Barely true. And barely, barely, true. barely true. And certainly not fun. Mm. And this is like truthful. And I, I sort of thought of making a film that like was shaped like an accordion, like the human heart, to expand you, because this is the spirit of the people, of the kids, and all of that, and then to, you know, squeeze your heart as well with the with the pain of it. But that's what life is. It's sort of pain and laughter, and and somehow on the streets of Katwe, our people live that dignity with great uh, with great, you know, panache and. It was a chance to capture that. I, uh, I was talking to some of my colleagues now and I'm thinking, who, Madina, you know, um, she did an amazing job yeah. to Fiona. She, she, she killed it, as we yeah. say it. She killed <laughs> um, that role of Fiona. And I'm just wondering now, as she sees herself, what she is or who she is right now, for me, the similarities of her story with Fiona are quite ridiculous, you know, because she's now on the red carpet of Hollywood, which yeah. is probably something that she could have dreamed of, but it was a far-fetched dream yeah. for her. And that is more or less how Fiona is. She never yes. thought that she would be playing in these high championships or yes. wanting it that bad. Yes. How many more of these stories can we really get out of Africa? Because, like you rightfully said, the people that are telling our stories are not necessarily African. So the truth is almost into It all depends on us. The story of Fiona shows you that it is possible to dream and with incredible hard work and discipline and the support of mentors and teachers and family, it's possible to achieve, you know. And that is what we have to do with our cinema in Africa, all across the continent. We have to tell our own stories. And we have to tell them with excellence in craft, with not, oh, no apologies, you know. Oh, I'm from the third world and therefore it is slow and you know, whatever, forget about it. This is, Queen of Katwe, I think, I don't want to be immodest, but is an is a, is a example that you can make a truthful film with a completely local crew. Don't, don't forget, it's a hard, largely South African and Ugandan crew, all alumni from our films, my film school in part. Uh, and it's, 
and, and the stories from here and our, our struggle and our uh, the way you know the joy with which we live our lives is right here mm -hmm. and so we have to it's a call to it's a call to the cameras you yeah. know, <laughs> <laughs> there are too many scenes we had where there's tear checking moments but I remember a specific scene now as you speak about the stories of Africa where the kids taste ketchup for the first time <laughs> Oh my word, that I was never ready because I don't remember uh, the first time I ever tasted ketchup. I don't want to lie. I don't remember the first time I drank a milkshake. And those are the little things that we forget, hey. Oh my word. But anyway, yeah. um, moving forward now as we move towards um, this greater thing, because this, the exposure queen of Katwe gets, um, I suppose with the platform Disney as well, is incredible, which is very humbling to me even as an African, to think that, whoa, now more authentic stories will be told. Now, moving forward, you have said we tell the stories. How do we get buy-ins from huge cinema houses, like um, production houses rather, Disney, Paramount, all of those people, how do we get buy-in? Well, you have to first arm yourself with the craft of cinema. You have to learn how to tell a story. We all do. This is what the workshops exist for, schools exist for, Maisha exists for. It's the craft of screenwriting, uh, the craft of filmmaking. Uh, and, and, and South Africa is really powerful in, in its infrastructure. You know, it has the most wonderful experienced crews. So you have to organize and, and get that skill and then tell your story uh, step by step and find a community of artists who work with you. Uh, that is what it has to be, you know. Uh, dreams are achieved by actual work, you know, and so, and, but it's possible. But no, I don't have to be a mirror because I, I can imagine that it took a lot of strength for even Disney to be able to let you be and not yes. taint the yes. story with Disney. Yes. Mm. Well, um, the, firstly, remember that the irony is that Disney asked me to make this film, but the way I chose to make it, they did not interfere with that at all. In fact, they seemed to embrace it from the get-go. We had some discussions along the way about, because I love to sort of measure the brutality with the delicacy. Barbarity has to come with gentleness, uh, and, but both have to be there, and both are what is life on Katwe and everywhere. And, but it was, it's been my most positive experience working with Disney on Queen of Katwe because they let me, they not just let me, but they really respected uh, me as a filmmaker and embraced uh, my sensibility because they felt, I think, the truth in it and the effectiveness in it. Oh, ma'am, thank you so much. Thank you. you are definitely a queen and thank you for giving Kathleen your time. Thanks so much.